Probably don't need this mic. I've got to build in one. Not as powerful as my wife's, but it's pretty powerful. So how's everyone doing tonight? Did you come expecting God to do something? Well, if you didn't, you're in the wrong place. Because God is going to move tonight. Amen? Already His presence is here. Wherever two or more gathered, He's there. Presence in the worship today we could feel and in the prayer. God is an awesome God. He's an incredible God. And the thing I like about God, God will do what He says He will do. You never have to doubt God. If you're going to doubt anything, doubt your doubts. Don't ever doubt God. Because God will do what He says He will do. My beautiful wife and I, Sandy, we've traveled to many countries, ministered the gospel, and uh, God has always kept His word to us. Never has He failed us one time. Never ever. You can stand on His word. You can believe God in every circumstance and situation. All you need is one word from God to change your life. That's all you need is one word from God to change your life forever. Such an awesome, awesome God. We've traveled throughout the nations. We've traveled to many, many places. Uh, Carol and Robert have been with us in many services in Brazil. We were uh, directors of a children's home down there in Brazil, and we traveled there through a ministry, and we ministered so many times, actually made us. CD in Portuguese? No, it wasn't me. It was them. And uh, awesome. We traveled and through all of these towns, and man, just the presence and power of God was incredible. Was incredible. But tonight, I have a word for you, and I've got a lot of word for you tonight. You see, because I'm a man who believes in the word. Your opinion, my opinion, ain't worth two cents worth of Kentucky dirt. I'll tell you right now, but God's word is eternal, it is powerful, and it will bring change. Amen? I want, to, I want to make a statement to you. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And we know His will by His Word. If you're going to receive anything from God, you have to know it's God's will for you to have it. Amen? Then you can come in faith. I heard a man not long ago, and he's preaching a lot, a lot of the world, and he's an elder in some churches, and I heard him say it, make a statement in church, and it just rubbed me the wrong way. He said he had a dream, and this being appeared to him in this dream. And he says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And she said, man, that stuff don't, it don't have no effect on me. And in the dream, he said, the blood of Jesus is against you. She said, man, that stuff don't have no effect on me. And he said, I couldn't do nothing with her. He said, then the Lord spoke to me about talk about the victory that happened in Calvary. And he said, that bothered her. I've traveled all over the world. Well, not all the world. A lot of places in the world. I've never seen one demonic presence, one sickness that did not bow to the name of Jesus. Because the Word says everything bows to the name of Jesus. I don't care what being it is, if it's in heaven, if it's in the earth or under the earth, it'll bow to the name of Jesus. Amen? I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. There's nothing more powerful than the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And the power of the Holy Spirit. So tonight, your life is going to be changed. Somebody might have drugged you here. See, that's my problem. As a boy, I had a drug problem. My grandfather, he was a Baptist pastor. My mother was a gospel singer. And she drugged me to every church meeting she could find. We had a drug problem. Drug me to youth meetings. Drug me to prayer meetings. Church of God had a meeting, a revival. You were there. Baptist had a revival. You were there. It didn't matter what. You were always there. They drug you those things. But I'm glad that she did, amen, in my life. But I want to talk to you tonight about the God that never changes. See, I hear so many people ministering things, and they talk about different things. Well, you know, that's not for today. And this is not for today. In my family, when I got saved and got filled with the Spirit, that God placed a healing anointing. And I began to pray for people. I was just young in the Lord, but I just knew if I prayed, Jesus said, the believer lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I didn't know much else. 
And I'd lay hands on them in Jesus' name and they'd recover. And some of my family said, well, we don't think that's for today. See, we don't believe in healing in our church. I said, that's why nobody gets healed. He said, the believer shall. The believer shall, amen? Amen. See, I don't believe in dumbing down the word. I don't believe in hey, cutting down the word to suit your fancy. It's the word of God that will change a generation. See, there's a generation out here, they've heard this milk toast preaching so long that they want to see a living God. Paul said, I didn't come to you with men's wisdom, but I came into you in power and demonstration of the Spirit. Amen. If we're going to change a generation, we have to have a demonstration of the power and the Holy Ghost. That's what we've got to have tonight. So I want to talk to you about the God that never changes. It says in Hebrews 13 and 8, it said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. I've heard people say, oh, God, just he, he doesn't heal anymore. God doesn't speak prophetically anymore. I said, no. I said, oh, no, God doesn't do that anymore. I said, well, you need to change God's because your God is an idol. He's not Jesus Christ because he's alive today, amen. He's still healing the sick today. His name has never changed. His power has never diminished. His anointing is the same today. <clears throat> if he said, you'll lay hands on the sick, they shall recover, help yourself. Start praying for him, amen. Start believing for him. Since I watch God, and in your life you'll see miracles as God raises them up. Years ago, when I first got filled with the Spirit, a powerful man of God, at that time he had preached in over 68 nations, just an incredible man of God. I've never seen any man in my life that God used like he did in the gifts of the Spirit. He says, I want to talk to you about some things. And they said, he said, there's an anointing in your life. And I want you to keep chart of it. And he said, I want you to pray for the sick because that's what the word you believe. He said, yeah, absolutely. He said, if you'll keep a journal, you'll find out over 90% of everybody you pray for will be healed. Are you hearing me? That's what the word says. So it made me right there begin to believe more and more. And I found out through my life when I go and pray in places, I see God do the miraculous. I see God heal him because, see, I expect God to keep his word. Amen? A man come to me one time, Brother Scott, and he says, why is it you're seeing so many miracles? He said, people in churches are coming in, and they're seeing miracles. Doctor confirmed miracles. Why are you seeing so many miracles? I said, it's simple. I got a formula. What's your formula? He said, if you preach the word, he confirm it with signs following. Amen? So tonight, I'm simply going to bring you his word. See, the healing's not on me. The word's on me. And the obedience is on me to lay hands on you and the other believers here. And when we do, then God will do his part. Because after I do my part, I say, okay, God, be big tonight. Be big, Jesus. I'm going to watch you do what you said you would do. And I know you will not fail me in any circumstance or any situation. Amen? Amen. God is the same yesterday today and forever. Get your Bibles. Go with me to, to Matthew chapter 8. And I want to talk to you. I'm going to bring again some word because in order to be scriptural, we have to have what? The word. And what does the word do? Faith comes by hearing what? The word. So tonight I want you to hear the word. I want you to grab hold of the word. Tonight God's going to move. Tomorrow night he's going to even move greater because the Holy Spirit, everything will build more and more. Because people usually have to get used to you at first and just wonder, well, what's this person all about or what's that? But when they see the power of God and they see God do things and they, they start calling people. I was a, <laughs> I went out to California. I was in a meeting. I was in healing meetings that lasted for weeks and went out to California and we did a meeting out there called Nights of Praise and Worship. And these are the th one of the three of the worship leaders out there. And then said, so we're going to have a healing meeting along with that. So people came. There was a lot of people there, hundreds of people. So I preached the word and just began to move and the gifts of the Spirit, it began to come. And people watched miracles begin to happen. And miracles began to happen. One woman, she had had a stroke and for two years, her arm was frozen. Her daughter, she says, I want to be able to lift my arms and praise God again. Now this grabbed her sugar said, in the name of Jesus, raise your arm. Praise her, and her arm goes, whoop. And she starts praising the Lord. 
and glorifying God and people started coming and God started healing people and the miraculous began to happen and we're praying for people and we're ministering to all these people and you can watch things before your eyes that are taking place and we were praying and we were praying and we were praying and we were praying. I'm like, where in the world all these people coming from? And there was people there that when God began healing people, they were calling their family and say, come quick, God is on the move. Get down here, God's doing miracles. You see, healings are the, are the are we call it the, what, the dinner bell for salvation. And when people begin to see the power of God, that God's real, they'll come. And these people told me pastors were coming and people were coming. Coming out, some of them looked like they just got out of bed. Some people said, we woke them up and said, get here fast. God heals so many people. It was just incredible. They were coming in and what God was doing. Will he do the same tonight? And tomorrow night? And the night after? And the night after? Because he never changes, Amen. One place in the Bible is the only place I can find where anybody ever questioned Jesus' will to heal. In the 8th chapter of Matthew, verse 1, Jesus came down from the mountain and said, Large crowds followed him, and a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. You can make me, if you're willing, God, if it's your will. Jesus forever settled that healing is his will. Look what he said. I will be clean. Forever settled, he healed the leper, made him whole. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus does. That is our God. Amen. That is him. That's what he does every time. So I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter 8 verses 14 through 7. And Jesus came into Peter's house. He saw Peter's mother, Peter's wife's mother, lying sick with a fever. That's Peter's mother-in-law. And said, Jesus touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. So he walks in the house. He sees the woman sick. I don't see where he asked anybody. I don't see where they asked him. He just went over and laid hands on her and healed her. Some people said a blessing Peter did not ask for. Because that was his mother-in-law. But <laughs> there was, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> but she was healed and she rose up and began to minister to him what did she do when she was healed she got up and began to work right for the Lord hallelujah if you're healed then you need to act like you're healed amen you need to do heal things and I like this it said and when evening was come they brought to him many that were what possessed with demons possessed with demons how many of you know demons haven't gone anywhere they're still here I've traveled again, every nation I've been to in the earth, and guess what? Cast demons out in all of them. They're still hanging around. They're dumb. They come to the meetings, get cast out. That's their own fault. <laughs> and he said he cast out the spirits with what? What did he cast them out with? His word. What do we cast them out with? The word in his name, amen? And he healed all who were sick. How many did he heal? All. All. Just a few? No, he healed all. All means all. Every single one of them he healed. Didn't matter what they had, he healed them. Amen? Amen. That's our God. That's our God. Heal them all. Are you listening to me? He never changes. Guess what he's going to do tonight and tomorrow night? Heal them all. And the night after that, heal them all. And the night after that, heal them all. Everybody you pray for, going to heal them all. Had people say, well, this person in this situation, come let me pray for them. Well, they've been down to this evangelist, they've been on this national evangelist, all this, and they're still sick. I said, yeah, but I haven't prayed for them. Because I'm a believer. When I lay hands on things, are going to change. That's just the way it is, amen? Because also, you got to know how to minister to the sick. I will build their faith up many times before I pray for them. I get them confessing with me. I get them agreeing with me. And the healing always comes, Amen. So we're looking at this, and we're seeing that he healed how many of them? All. 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 Turn me to Matthew chapter 9. Let's go there. We're just going to go through the book of Matthew for just a little bit. One time I held a revival, and God did miracles in the city of Toledo, Ohio. And they said, Jim, while you're here, you preach the whole book of, of Mark. The whole thing from beginning to end. I said, that's all right. 
It's all right. But we see in this one, here Jesus is. Jesus had been out, he'd been in a boat, they come back, and we see the things that Jesus has been doing, and just incredible, incredible things. And verse 9, and said verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 35, said Jesus went about all the cities and villages. What did he do? Teaching in their synagogue. Why was he teaching? Faith comes by what? Hearing. 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 So he was teaching and doing what? Preaching. Aren't you glad that you can teach and you can preach both? Preaching the gospel of what? The kingdom. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What is the kingdom of God? Jesus said, I didn't come to do my will, Father, but your will. Amen? Jesus said, what I see the Father do, I do. The kingdom of God is greater than any other kingdom. Jesus said, the kingdom shall be within you. See, when I go, I'm a carer of the kingdom. And the kingdom that I walk in the power and authority of is greater than any other kingdom on the face of the earth. Doesn't matter what it is. It is greater. So he was preaching the gospel what? of the kingdom. He said healing every what? Sickness and every what? Disease among the people. It didn't matter what it was. And when they saw the crowds, he was moved the compassion of them. Because they fainted, he said, like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus healed them all. Healed every single disease. Didn't matter what it was. I preached in Uganda in 2002. And I'll never forget. I'm there preaching. And downtown, Scott, you'd like this place. Downtown in Entebbe, that's where the capital is. And we're down there, and at, every, at noon every day, all of the business owners that are Christians, that's the majority of them, they shut down for two hours, and they come to this church. And they pray, and they worship, and they seek God. So they said, would you come and uh, preach there? I said, yes, sir. Well, I told the Ugandan, says, hey, I'll preach whatever you want to preach. They had me preaching five times a day. Different churches, yes, sir. So we go down this place, and I begin to preach, and then call for the sick to pray for the sick. Begin praying for the sick, man, and they just started being healed. You couldn't even walk from laying out. People were coming with, you know, Uganda was ravaged by AIDS, full-blown AIDS, and I'd rebuke AIDS, the spirit of infirmity of AIDS, come out of them, they'd manifest, they were laying them everywhere, everywhere. God did miracles. He healed AIDS patient after AIDS patient after AIDS patient. Why? Every sickness, every disease, I don't care what it is. People get cancer, and somebody says, oh, it's cancer. Oh, almighty cancer. I said, cancer bows to the name of Jesus Christ. It dies when the name of Jesus has spoken over it. It does not have any choice in the matter. I don't give sickness any choice. You got to go. That's just the way it is. You don't have a choice. So he healed them. So the next night, next day, they said, would you come back tomorrow? I said, sure. When I came back the next day, you couldn't get in the place. It was flooded. People outside the doors, people everywhere. And guess what God did again? The same thing. When I, after that, they said, you got to go. We got to take you out of the back. I said, why? They said, they'll tear your clothes off. They'll rip your jacket off. They'll just want something they can get a hold of that has the anointing on it, so you've got to go. And they slipped me out the back, and a woman was running. She said, Preacher, i got, I got to talk to you. i got to talk to you. i got to talk to you. And they said, You can't talk to her. you got to keep going. And God says, Stop and talk to her. I said, Hold on. And the lady came, and she says, I was in the meeting yesterday. She said, Full-blown tuberculosis. And she told all these things she had. She said, I had a massive sore down my forearm. She says, look, it's gone. It's gone. All is a little red spot. It's gone. She said, God healed me. The doctors would give her a death sentence, but I want you to know Jesus comes with, to give you life and life more abundant. Aren't you so glad tonight? Hallelujah. There's life in Jesus Christ. Heal them all. It's amazing, isn't it? With Jesus, they go places he would heal them all. And then Jesus tells his disciples, come to me, two by two, I'm going to anoint you. I'm going to anoint you. That's what he does to every disciple. Come on, somebody. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've been given, freely receive. He says, go. See, there's a thing with Jesus. Number one, what does he tell you to do? The gospel says go. What do you do? He said, preach the kingdom of God is at hand. Am I right? Go and preach. 
What are you going to preach about the kingdom of God? You can't preach about the kingdom of God unless you preach about the king. He said, then what do you do? Pray, for, manifest, demonstrate the kingdom. Number one, go. Number two, preach the kingdom. Number three, manifest the kingdom. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. It's still that way today. It hasn't changed. It's the same calling. People said, Jim, I need direction. I said, forward. How's that? <laughs> forward. I need a word from God. Go. Go. Don't stop. Is that all right? I'll give you a word. People come to me all the time. You got a word from God? Yep. Go. Go. Let's look at Matthew. Let's look at chapter. Is it chapter 12 I want to go to now? Yes, chapter 12. And let's look at verse 15. It said, when Jesus knew of this, he withdrew himself because they said, hey, they're looking for you to kill you. So he withdrew himself. And he said he withdrew himself from there and great multitudes followed him. And he did what? Healed them how many? All. All. Every single solitary one of them. He healed Every one of them didn't leave anybody out. But he's, when he came to him, he went and he healed them. He's doing the same thing today. Man, I love to see God. I love to see what, what God does. A man at a huge church, he said, we were in a prayer meeting and the ministers would meet on Monday mornings and pray there. And we had a bunch of ministers. We had uh, pastors. We had missionaries. And he said these words. He said, I don't know what's wrong. God just ain't healing anybody anymore. Simply God. Healed you. God ain't healing nobody anymore. Had biggest, beautiful church around there. He said, no. I said, no. Can you? I just, I, I, I can't explain it. And he's talking to the pastor there. Where went to church. He said, can you explain it? He said, no, I'll let Jim explain it. I said, thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> so he passed it to me. He said, can you explain it? I said, well, in a meeting the other night, there's a deaf lady heard. There's a lady that she got uh, totally healed of arthritis, crippled up, coming in, carrying her in, ran out walking. Another lady, they gave her the death sentence, wouldn't live two weeks, come carrying her in. She ran out of there, totally healed of cancer, been back to the doctor they can't find him. This woman was a great lady of God. Carried her in there, cursed the cancer, rebuked death, commanded her to be healed. And she went back up there and there was none. She had, she had to travel about an hour and a half up to the center, they test her, and there wasn't any cancer. So she's coming home down the interstate, and she's got her arm out the window, and she's praising God. So for about a hundred and something miles, she's praising God. And her husband said, woman, get your arm in this car. Said, them truck drivers think you're flirting with them. She said, <laughs> she said I don't care what they think. God has healed me. Now I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to praise him. Wouldn't that make you shout when they gave you up to die? When the doctors do all that they can, bless God, aren't you glad we've got another physician? When they give you the report, go to Isaiah, say, hey, you have, to, you have to die and not live. Go to Isaiah 53. He said, who has believed the report of the Lord? To whom of the arm of the Lord revealed? He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastised our pieces on him by he is stripes. You are healed, glory to God. That's the report of the Lord. I'll take the report of the Lord in the face of every circumstance and situation. I will take the report of the Lord. Amen. That's what she did. So I praise God. Praise God. Matthew chapter 14. Said verse, let's go to verse uh, 35 and 36. Said, when they had crossed over, came to the land of Ga uh, Gennesaret, which is the land of Gatherings. This is where Jesus had freed the demoniac. And then the people came and said, you got to go. Would you leave our coast? So they, they ran him off. The man who Jesus cast out the legion of demons, he said, Lord, let me go with you. He says, no, you stay here. And you go tell everybody what the Lord has done. He was in the Decapolis, which was ten cities. So he went, one of Jesus' first 
evangelist, converse, and he preached. This is the same place where they ran Jesus off. Look at this time. When they crossed over and came to the land, when the men of the place recognized him, they sent word to all the surrounding county, country, and they brought to him all that were sick and begged him. They might only touch the hem of his garment. As many as had touched it were made perfectly whole. So they ran him off the first time. When the old boy went preaching to him, told him about the power of God, the deliverance power of God, when he come back this time, they went and found every single person they could find in the whole country and brought him to Jesus. Amen. When God delivers you and God heals you, you should have a testimony that would bring people to the house of God. Hallelujah. Am I right on that? Bring them to the house of God. Tell everybody what the Lord has done for you. Tell everybody what God has done. I, I was in a service and uh, I got a call. My mom... I was holding service, healing service. Mom said, Jim, you know, Billy Moses said, yeah. I said, her, uh, she's sick with cancer, and uh, she wants you to come to her church and pray for her. Would you mind coming to her church and praying for you? I said, yep, I would. I said, I'm holding healing services at another church. She needs to come. She said, but why wouldn't you go there? I said, everybody at their church dies. Everybody they pray for dies. When her friend, Billy's friend, died, beautiful woman, when she died, I said, Mom, let me know who's in the room with her. She said, what? I said, they, they're not smart enough to know where she's at, but that's a spirit of infirmity, the cancer she had. It will be on one of these that went there with her because they're all in unbelief. They were all in unbelief. So, sure enough, I said, Mom, was she in the room with her? She said, yes, she was. So, they called her. She called me back said, well, she'd rather you come to their church. I said, tell her she wants to live, come to where I'm at. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to fight unbelief. Jesus had to put the unbelief out. I had to put the whole church out to pray for. It's true. It's true. So, so she came. Her daughter's supposed to have a baby and is doing three weeks, and she'd been the, the specialist at the UK Medical Center. They said, you'll never live to see that baby born. Think about this. So the Lord told me, when she comes, only you pray for her. Now, this hasn't happened many times, but it happened this time. He said, don't let anybody else touch her, but you pray for her. I'm going to show you to pray for her. Why? Because God didn't want anybody to come up. See, some people have pity on the sick. I never have pity on the sick. I have faith for their healing. I have faith for their healing. So she came. They come carrying her in with her sister. Her dad wanted boys. He had girls, so he named one Billy and one Tommy. Figure that out. <laughs> so they come and her sons, I played ball with them stuff. They come walking in, rocking them. I said, bring her and set her down right over here. She was as white, young lady, as your jacket. Sick. Just go over there and she just, they set her in that chair, a skeleton, she just sick. As I'm going to preach the word later when the anointing moves, I'm going to pray for the sick. Okay. So while I was ministering the word and things are going up then i said it's time to pray for people and i said bring billy bring her to me so they brought billy up there i said billy the word says believer lay hands on the sick that recovered you believe i'm a believer she said yes i said what happens when i lay hands on you then do you believe you'll be healed she said yes i said now i can miss it because i'm human we can all miss things I said, Billy, I'm looking at you, and there's sometimes that God does this. It's like I'm looking at you like I'm looking at an x-ray, and I can see everything in your body that's wrong. He's done that in different places. I said, Billy, I'm looking at you, and I see all your bones, and in your bones it looks like spider webbing throughout your bones. She had bone cancer. Oh, and I didn't know she had bone cancer. I didn't know what kind she had. That's what I'm seeing. She shook her head yes, and her sister shook her head yes. So I said, Billy, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to curse the cancer. Now I'm going to rebuke death, and you're going to live and not die. So I laid hands on her. I said, thank you, Lord. Your word is true. In the name of Jesus, cancer, I curse you. I command every abnormal cell in her body to die in the name of Jesus. I said, I command you to go. Spirit of cancer, spirit of infirmity, I command you to go from her body now in Jesus' name. I said, death, I rebuke you. You have no place here. Get out in Jesus' name. And prayed for her. 
I said, it's done, Billy. You're healed. They took her over there and set her on that chair over on the right in the front row. And I ministered to other people. And as I look over there, Billy's sitting there. Before long, she's raising her hands. And her color changes. She, the white left, and the color changed. And Billy got up and started walking around the church house with her hands up, praising God. And she walked out of that church. Went, went back up to the UK <laughs> Medical Center. They said, we don't know what has happened. Because also commanded anything that had been damaged or taken by the devil to be restored. So we don't know what's happened, but guess what? There's no spider webbing in your bones. They run tests, another x-ray said, it's all normal. And they'd also taken her spleen out before. And the doctor said, I can't explain this, but you can see it right here. There's a brand new spleen which is growing in. That's God. That's God. That was in the year 2000. Her husband since passed. Billy is alive today. She's up in her 80s. I called her and I'd given her a book by T.L. Osborne. I said, girl, you get in this book, you read this, you keep your faith built up because I know they didn't preach anything of faith in her church. I said, you build your faith up, you read this. Every day I'm going to give you a prescription. Read at least one chapter a day. So I called her. I said, Billy, about a year after she'd been healed, and I said, Billy, you read that book by T.L. Osborne? She said, I live in that book. I read it every day. She said, when I went back to the hospital and run those tests and stuff where the cancer was gone, nurses would come into the room and cry because of the presence of God. Yeah. And one nurse was crying. She said, we need to get the guy who's terminal down in so-and-so room and bring him in here. And her sons, and they heard overheard the, the nurse. They said, why? She said, because the presence of God is so strong in here. If we can get him in this room, he'll be healed. The medical profession. Be healed. They brought him to Jesus and he healed him. In the 15th chapter of Matthew, Jesus, there's so many good things in this chapter. The woman who wasn't even in the covenant of God and God heals her daughter. Just so many. But for time's sake, let's go here to this, the healing of the people. Let's go to verse Let's go to 29. Jesus departed from there, Matthew 15, 29, and passed by the Sea of Galilee, went upon a mountain and sat down. Great uh, crowds came to him, what? Having with him those that were lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others, and placed them at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Do you see this? They crowds, Jesus went up on a mountain. These people carried their sick up on the mountain. Why? Because when they saw and heard of the power of Jesus, they said there's no hope down here. There's no hope for this lost and dying world. It's not in a Republican. It's not in a Democrat. It's not in a state. It's not in a nation. Yes, we need to vote for those who will serve God, who will hold up godly principles. Yes, but let me tell you something. What is going to save America? What's going to save England? What's going to save France? What's going to save Africa? What's going to save India? It's the power of a resurrected Savior preached by men and women of God who have the anointing and know who they are in Christ and bring the kingdom of God into those kingdoms. Watch the power of God. The power of God. Brought them there. And Jesus, now, sometimes people don't understand this. They came to him having with the lame, the blind, the mute, and the maimed. Do you know what the maimed are? They were missing a limb. They were missing a limb. And the limbs grew back. And they were healed. Well, one thing about it, when you got faith, you can look at him and say, I might have to carry your butt up this mountain, but you're going to be walking down. <laughs> Just to let you know right now, you leaving healed. I carried you up here, and you're going to get healed. You grab some faith, boy, and you listen to this man, and you get your healing. Amen? Because we ain't carrying you back down. Uh-uh. <laughs> and it said, the multitude, now listen, verse 31. The multitude marveled when they saw 
What? The mute speaking, the main made whole, the lame walking, the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Who did they glorify? God of Israel. They glorified him. They glorified him, the God of Israel. I am so sick of three points in a poem. I'm so sick of they say they're preaching, but they're drier than cracker juice. They got no anointing about them. Some of them say, boy, do you think that message he preaches? He didn't preach nothing. He just talked. And there wasn't any anointing. We don't give altar calls anymore. Rarely in a lot of the churches at large, we don't do that. When I was out in California, the church, Samuel Teddy, they told us, don't use certain words. They're offensive. Born again is offensive. I said, man, Jesus would offend them all. Nicodemus said, what must I do to be saved? You must be born again. You must be born again. You can't dumb the gospel down and win the lost. You've got to preach the gospel in the fullness and the resurrection and the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. God has anointed you to get his will done in the earth. And it's going to take the anointed church of God to change things. Amen? When I was a boy, I remember I'd go in those churches, man. Those people would shout. We didn't have any air conditioning. All we had was these old fans. And guess what? We're on them. Paper fans. Funeral home advertisements. That's all they had. But I'll never forget, they preach, and boy, they preach on hell. They preach hell so hot, I'm a little boy. And you're like, Phew. I don't know if they called you to sweat, because they preached on hell. You don't hear many messages on hell. Jesus preached twice more on hell than he did heaven. And they preached on those, and many times those men, I'll never forget as long as I live as a young boy and I was in a coal mining camp, and the women would come in, worshiping God, the husbands would bring them, drop them off at the door, and then the men would all go out there, and you'd see sometimes out there, you'd see the light of their cigarette. And there the windows would be up. See, the whole community heard the word because we didn't have any air conditioning, so you had to let the, the windows up. And I'll never forget as a boy, all of a sudden it would happen. Preacher be preaching under the anointing about the salvation of Jesus Christ. And you'd see a man come running in and fall in the altar. No altar call was given. God gave an altar call. And you'd see them give their life to Christ. Why? If that calls of the power of Jesus Christ. When I was a boy, I knew there was something in the house of God that there wasn't anywhere else. I could feel it in the atmosphere. I could feel it when I walked in. People need to come into your church. They need to feel the presence of a living God, something that they don't have anywhere else. We went to a church. Did you force us to go there, Robert? Robert yeah, Robert's to blame. He forced us to go there. He wanted to visit this church. We didn't know anything about it. So we go to this church. So we come in. They got a good coffee bar now and donuts. They had the best donuts. Krispy Kremes. You know Krispy Kremes are poppers. You take a Krispy Kreme donut, put it in your hand, and you squeeze it or touch it, and you just pop it. It's only about that big around. <laughs> you can go through a dozen in no time. So we go there, and we walk in, and I used to be a heathen. Some of you, I know you've been saved all your life. It's not my story. So the music they were playing, I said, man, I used to dance to this back in the clubs. Then the next song, man, wait, well, hold it just a minute. I, yeah, that, I know that song and everything, yeah, yeah. We were listening to them. They were singing secular songs. Am I right? Then the service would start, they would sing Christian songs. Then after the service was over and everybody was leaving, they would sing secular songs. And I'm like, why are they doing this? Pastor Scott, they said, we're doing this because we want to make the lost feel comfortable. Mm. That's what they said. When they come in and hear this worldly music, they're going to feel comfortable. And let me tell you something. When I heard the ministry that happened after that, they could be the devil was comfortable in that church. You remember when the fire, when the, when Paul built a fire and a snake bit him? What did Paul do? He shook it off in the fire. What people don't know was those snakes would den under those rocks there in Malta. Paul built a fire so hot, it got the snake mad. It got the devil mad. We need to have a fire so hot in our churches, hallelujah, that it makes the devil mad. Oh, Paul just swung him off in the fire. He didn't have any power against Paul because Paul walked in the anointing of God. We need to walk in that power again, in that presence of God. I want to ask you a question. Does the devil know you? 
Does he know your name? Seven sons of Sceva, religious men, they tried to cast this demon out. said, we know how to do this in the name of Paul, whom, or Jesus whom Paul preaches. We adjure you come out. And the demon said, I know Paul, and I know Jesus, but who are you? And he whipped all seven of them and run them out. Sandy and I went to Sweden, or Switzerland. We get off the plane in Switzerland. The pastors come meet us. We're having a good time. We just get to the parking lot, and a demoniac man comes running, and he meets us, and he's cursing us, and cursing us out, and all these curses speaking over us. You must leave. And there's a demonic voice. You don't belong here. we in this country. You have to go. In English, which the man didn't know, but it's a big demonic voice. And I said, Sandy, we made the devil so mad we ain't even preached. <laughs> and he's already mad. Already mad. <laughs> I said, I said, that's pretty good, meet you in a parking lot. <laughs> Sorry to tell him, say, hey, could you hold on to that till I preach? And then, then go ahead with what you're going to say. But you know what? And he ran. Remember, Sandy? We started to talk to a man. Boy, he was gone. I'm telling you, he looked like Antoine Bowl. Woo! <laughs> Getting out of there. <laughs> so we were in the service then. <laughs> and preached, I preached on the dominion authority God gave the church. Whenever I do that, demons act up in America, in wherever we're at, Brazil, it doesn't matter, Africa. And so I'm preaching there in Switzerland. When I do, this girl starts manifesting. I said, tell her to sit down. I rebuked her in the name of Jesus. I said, stay quiet. I said, I'll deal with her after the service. After the service, we started dealing with this girl, and she started manifesting. She was into everything. She started trying to levitate, and she was just, what do you call it? Her, her face was distorted. All was distorted. She looked at Sandy, and she looked at me. And in English, which we talked to pastor, she didn't know. Looks in my face and says, I know who you are, and I hate you. I said, it's good. I hate you too. Now come out of her. <laughs> right, Sandy? And she was delivered by the power of God. The devil knows your name. He knows who you are. Quit being afraid of him. Don't ever have any fear of the devil, demons, whatever come your way. Don't ever have any fear. Fear is not from God. Not from God. They glorified God when they saw all the things happening. Why is the anointing on you? Why? Jesus is in us, but Jesus can be in us, but no anointing on us. In Luke, after Jesus had been fasting 40 days and nights, he comes down to the synagogue. And he enters in, as was his what? Custom. So Pastor Scott, am I right? Jesus entered in there a lot. It's his custom. So he reached for the book and they hand him the book. And he opened it to Isaiah. And he preached this word. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Has anyone in here got the Spirit of the Lord upon you? Amen. Now he had just been baptized in the Holy Spirit 40 days prior when John in the river the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he'd been going in and out all his life to this synagogue. I want to show you something. He said, because he has done what? Anointed me. Look at somebody by you and say, God has anointed you and he's anointed me. And if you're anointed, you'll be annoying to the devil. Amen. He said to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. Those who were outcast, downtrodden, the one society had given up on. Jesus said, he sent me to preach to the poor. Guess what? Everyone who doesn't know Jesus Christ is a pauper. I don't care if they're a billionaire on this earth. They're a pauper if you don't know Jesus Christ. Man, where are we going to live at? We're going to walk on streets of gold. People killing themselves to get. Think about that. So he says, anointed he sent me to do what? Heal the brokenhearted. God has sent you for healing. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Those are in captivity. See, here's the problem. There's a lot of people, they're in a situation, they're in captivity, and Sister Sandy, they don't know how to get out. They have never been raised in the gospel. They don't know anything about it. They're in captivity and bondage. They don't know how to get out. 
They think this will be their life all of their life. Like the people at AIDS. The doctors that give them up said, you got to die, you cannot live. They were held captive by that disease. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. We've seen the blind see. We were, we were in one service in Brazil. I mean, literally, I don't know how many people this thing, big open air thing, and it was just packed. A pastor and his, uh, pastor and his wife came through. She said, hey, the Americans are in town. Our service is over. Would you, do you want to go down there and, and see them? I said, yeah. So we were having outdoor worship. So they came in, and it was packed. Do you remember that big place, Robert, in uh, uh, Victoria de Conquista? You sure? Oh, CF and I, okay. Yeah, about 5,000 people in there in the back. So we're worshiping, man. God has just come down in that place. And the pastor's wife, she said, I can see them up on that stage. He said, well, that's good. I can see them too. She said, no, you don't understand. Her right eye, was, she was totally blind. Her retina had been totally detached. No sight, just total darkness. She looked at him and she said, her left, she said, I can see them on that stage totally healed by the presence of God when she got in the presence of the power of God where God was moving. Other people, one lady that removed her ovaries, we prayed for her and God gave her brand new ovaries. She wanted to have kids. That's our God, amen? That's what God does. We need to expect these things, to expect God to move. And God wants to use each and every one of us, amen, in that way. Many times we'll be in places and just when God begins to move in, in one service, uh, a lady came and I found out, I'm glad I prayed for her first, I found out that she was the nurse who came to my elementary school when I was seven years old and stuck me with all them needles back in those days, <laughs> those vaccines. I didn't know till afterwards. I might have said, Lord, I don't know about this. <laughs> but she, uh, they came leading her to the service. They came leading her. Well, people leading somebody, you pretty much know what it is. And my cousin was with me, and she'd been totally healed when I prayed for of uh, multiple sclerosis. MS. Now, I said, Stacy, you're going to pray for this woman with me. Get, up, get yourself up here. If you healed, you should believe in healing, amen? And she does. I said, lady, I said, what did you come for tonight? She said, I'm 100% blind in this eye. She said, I have less than 25% sight in this eye. I have four eye diseases. I said, do you believe God's going to heal you tonight? She said, I sure do. I said, when hands are laid on you in the name of Jesus, what's going to happen? She said, I'll receive my sight. I said, good enough for me. So we laid hands on her. We rebuked the illness in Jesus' name. We commanded healing to come in her body. So we just loosed the healing on her body. I said, sight be. Now, I didn't ask her to open her eye and said, and ask her, can you see anything? I said, now, open your eye. Look right out here. It broke out and tell me what you see. She opened her eyes and she said, I see a woman right there in a red dress. And I see this guy over here. People just fell out. Totally healed. Totally healed. That's our God. That's our God. That's what God does. I preached on healing. They never preached on healing in that church. But God is a God. Some people say, well, if it's God's will, he might heal somebody. It is. I had a girl at work the other day, and she said, it works for me. She said, well, if it's God's will, I'll be here early Monday. I said, it is, so I'll see you early Monday. <laughs> Try to throw that old thing out there. <laughs> but God's will. It is his will every time you lay hands on somebody for them to receive their healing. Now, I'm going to burst people's bubble. Every time you lay hands on somebody, the healing anointing comes, whether they accept it, or whether they reject it. Come on. He said, you shall lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. He said, the anointing destroys the yoke of the enemy. Why did Jesus say, lay hands? Because when you lay your hand, the power of the Holy Spirit is in you. And the power of the Holy Spirit moves upon that person. It moves on that person. I've had people before that they bring out of traditional churches. One lady is my, uh, my brother-in-law's mother, elderly lady, and she had several things wrong with her, and she went to a church that believes the days of miracles are gone. So she started watching people being healed in the services. 
And she come, and she said, I want to be prayed for. I said, hello, Lois, what all you got wrong? I got this wrong, that wrong, that wrong, that wrong. It's okay. I said, I'm going to lay hands on you in Jesus' name. God's going to heal you. She said, I believe that. When I laid hands on her head and commanded her to be healed in Jesus' name, the power of God hit this woman, and she was gone. Now, Baptists don't fall out. Not too often. So she fell out. And she is one they carried out. And she was totally, totally healed of about four different things. My brother-in-law come, he said, Mom said, Mom said when you laid hands on her, put it on top of her head, said it felt like lightning bolts went through her body and started shooting out her feet. That's just the presence of the Holy Spirit. See, we have something, but you've got by faith to release it. Dynamite, don't do a thing till you put a cap to it and set it on fire or electrical current. It's got the power, but it takes something to ignite it, to cause that explosion. So if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you got the same power that cleaned up the whole universe in six days. He cleaned up the biggest mess in the universe in six days. What is your problem to God? Nothing. Nothing. God is a God of power. So you see all these cases, did Jesus heal them all? What does he want to do tonight? Has he ever changed? In Exodus 15 and verse 26, he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Or I'm the Lord that heals you. I am. I am. Not I was. I like where they were talked about that. First Peter 2 and 24 said he bare our, our uh, sins on a on a tree that we being dead to sin might live under righteous by whose stripes you were healed. An old preacher heard this, and that preacher said, well, bless God, if I were, then I is. If I were, I is. I walked out healed. That's the word of God. That's the word for us. Now, we're the body of Christ. When he did communion tonight, and he started talking about communion, the Bible talked about in communion, Paul said, many of you are dead sickly, weak, and have died before your time because you don't discern the body of Christ. You haven't discerned the body of Christ. Paul said that's why the sickness is there. That's why many people have died early. They don't discern the body. So you've got to realize something. Tomorrow night I'm going to talk about the dual provision, if God, if God permits. And he said this, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. That's your spirit. Chastising our peace was born him. That's your soul, your emotions. And by his stripes you were healed. That's your body. He paid for it all. God wants you holding, holding every area. In the church today, we have just as many people taking antidepressants and things for all these things than we do in the world. There's no difference. We should be the happiest people on the face of the earth. The Bible says, in your presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures evermore. Think about where we're going to. Think about this. We need to walk in that. See, this is what the Word says about us. If you need healing, God will heal you. Tonight. Now, I want to ask you this question. Theological. Is Jesus ever going to die again for you? Now, the Catholics believe he dies over and over every time they take communion. But that's not right. He died when? How much? Once for us all. Am I right? Yes. So when I go to the altar, he's not going to die again for my sins if I'm a sinner, is he? No. Also, question for you, is he ever going to take another stripe again? No. Now, here's how important your healing is. Come on, somebody. He healed you before he saved you. Come on. He went to the whipping post and then to the cross. Now, the cross was enough shedding his blood for your salvation, your eternal salvation. But he did more, didn't he? He said, I want you whole in every area. I want you whole. See, sin is to the spirit what sickness is to the body. They both destroy. They're both from the devil. You know how you want to know if it's from the devil? Does it kill, steal, or destroy? If it does, it's not a God. God does not put sickness on his children. I've heard people say, well, I believe maybe this is God's will for my life. I said, you believe that, pastors? Yeah, 
My pastor said he believed in sickness. God's will arrive. He's working something out in us. I said, really? They said, yeah. I said, then why are you going to a surgeon, to a specialist to get God's will cut out? I said, say, Lord, make me sicker. Give me something else. But you don't hear that, do you? See, we've been in bondage. My dad died before his time because of sorry preaching. He did. He could have lived. Well, you know, the preacher said, you got to die of something. I said, Dad, you do, old age. I said, the Lord says, come on home, and you go on home. It is never God's will for you to be sick, never. Now, I want to ask you a question. You got a, ba- you got a girl right there, right? Would you ever put sickness on her? Why not? Oh, you ain't going to prove her? Because you do what? You love her, right? And you, got, you only got the best for her, right? That's the way God is. God does not place sickness on his children. God only has the best for us. Only the best for us. If God puts sickness on his children, then he's a child abuser. God will never put anything on you. And listen to me. You never have to carry anything that Jesus bore. He bore your sicknesses. He bore your diseases. You don't have to. Never you have to bear that. I hear people say, well, I believe God is going to heal me. I believe there's a time for that. I said, I do too, when you believe. When you believe. I, I know someday now, and I've had people tell me, I believe it's going to come in some special way, and this and that. I said, it already did. On a whipping post. That's a special way it came. You don't have to be bound. I've told people I refuse to die with one of Satan's stinking disease because Jesus needs to get what he paid for. He paid for you spirit, soul, and body. Amen? That's what God paid for, and that's what I want God to get. I don't want to get in front of God like one guy that talked about died sick, and they said, what's he going to do when he gets before God? One guy said, if you get there and the guy's got before God, says, God, why did I have to die sick? And he said, the Lord said, because you're dumb. I told you in my word. I've already provided for healing. You're dumb. That's why you had to. I know that's humorous, but let's think about it. He's already provided. Let's say if it was just a pill, and they had a pill, and they said, hey, guess what? It's already provided. And you say, no, I'm not going to go get that pill. But all you got to do, it's paid for. It was that pill. It was an out expense. You could not afford that pill, amen, because of the price was paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. And what they said, just go get that pill and take it, and you can be totally healed. Every disease, every infirmity set free. And you say, no, I don't want to go get that pill. No, I don't know if that's for me. But we're telling you your name's on it. Oh, but I don't know. Then I would look at you and say, dumb, dumb, dumb. Got a dumb spirit on you. Because here's the thing tonight. All you got to do is say, healing is mine. I take it. I take it, bless God. I take my healing tonight. The word says it's mine, it's mine. And that's the way it is. That's the way it is. It's mine. It's mine, and I take it. I receive it. It's purchased. It's bought. It's paid for. I just got to receive it. What you're going to do tonight, listen to me, is you're going to receive the healing that's already been bought for you. It's already paid. And what a price. The body of the broken body of Jesus Christ. They say he was whipped so bad you could see his internal organs when he breathed. That's how bad it was when he was ripped apart. They don't show that in some of these little things. But that's what it was. He did that for me and for you. Why? Because we don't have to suffer. We don't have to split up with disease and all these things. I got bit. <laughs> I was preaching. I was traveling evangelists. And my mom and my sister, I was doing their lawns and stuff for them. And I'll never forget. I got to know my covenant. I got home and I went to take a shower. There was a tick on my leg. I didn't think nothing. I was a boy grew up on a farm. We had ticks, cattle, everything in the world, you know. So I just pulled it off, took my shower, went on about my business. It just had a little red spot. The next day, there was a ring around it. I'm still glorifying God. I'm not paying any attention, you know. The next day, I woke up. My bed was wet with sweat. I tried to get up, and I fell like a drunk man. Tried to get to the bathroom. This time it had a great big circle on it. I was sick. My head felt like somebody was inside it with hammers just beating on it. 
Every joint and muscle in my body hurt. There was nowhere my body didn't hurt. So I went back in there, moved those sheets and things, laid on the bed, and I just began to call on the name of the Lord. I began to say this, you're not in my covenant. You're not in my covenant. And I began to confess the healing scriptures, begin to confess them. And I battled this thing. Three days I battled this thing. At the end of that third day standing, you see, if you decide you're going to stand no matter what, you'll find out you don't have to stand that long. I woke up that third day, and glory to God, everything was gone. And I just glorified God. And I went up to preach in this place, and the, I, the pastor wasn't there. They had me come to preach, and the, one of the brothers said, Did you hear where the pastor, he's up in Lexington. said, no. said, his daughter, she's a news reporter. said, yeah. said, well, her and her fiancé were out hiking in the mountains. She got bit with a tick. She's got uh, Lyme's disease. They got in the hospital, all kinds of IVs on her in bad shape. I said, wow, well, we'll pray for her, intercede tonight. Then back home, somebody said, did you hear about so-and-so? I said, no. So what happened? Got bit with a tick. He got Lyme disease. I said, Wow. He's in the hospital, been in there. They got all of IVs, all this stuff. He said, they called me. I said, what were his symptoms? Every symptom I said, come on me, he had. The lady up there, I asked him about here. Dad said, he, every symptom I had, they had. Lyme disease. They stayed in there for months. What's the difference? Because I refuse. I refused to take one of Satan's filthy diseases and let it put me down. I said, Jesus, I'm healed by your stripes. This thing, and I spoke to it. I spoke to it. Jesus talked to everything, man. He talked to trees. He talked to the wind. He talked to everything. You should too. And I spoke to it. I said, you're not in my covenant. I don't know what you are, but I know who sent you. And you're going to have to go right back to the same place you came from. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I stood on the word, and I received the healing, which he had already done for me. What are you going to do tonight? Amen? Without a doubt, you're going to receive it. Because he said, if the believer laid hands on you in his name, what would happen? His name changes everything. His name changes everything. You know his name could still controls the weather? We go down to Brazil. Our bus, it's this monsoon season, is pushing water going in. This is a big bus pushing water, going in. We were supposed to have some out, outdoor meetings because we do evangelism with the college kids, everything. Went to the church that night, and the kids were saying, Jim, it's just raining like crazy. There's all this water. Well, I was going to so let's go to church tonight. And that night I stood up prophetically, and I said, it's going to rain inside the church while we're here, but it's not going to rain outside. I said, in the name of Jesus, rains, I rebuke you. You will stop until we're done. In the name of Jesus. The next day, get a call. Hey, hey, the pastors, guess what? It's not raining. And I said, guess what? That's what I said. <laughs> well, we're going to have the street meetings. So we went down to the street meetings, down in the worst areas, had meetings. People saved, people healed, people delivered. And everybody, the college students, looked and they said, look, there is a circle around where we're at. It was raining everywhere else, but no rain there. See, the devil, God sends the rain to help you, not to harm you. The devil intended on washing us out. But God had better plans. Amen? God had better plans. We need to be the spiritual weathermen, just like Elijah. said, hey, see a cloud coming? said, brother, it's going to rain. Mm. Wow. You've only seen a, a cloud been a small cloud, but look out. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Are you with me? I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Seven times the prophet said, go back again. The man kept coming back. There's nothing. Go back because I got a word from the Lord. Are you listening to me? I got a word from the Lord because God says, go show yourself to the king. It's trying to kill you. I'm going to send rain. And the seventh time, the prophet came back. And he said to the bank of the prophet, says, I see a cloud. 
the size of a man's hand. Come up out of the sea. He told the king, said, get yourself ready. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. And rain yet. And he said, the sky, when the prophet released that, began to fill up with clouds and the lightning. And the king girthed up himself in his chariot. You know, the kings have the best horses. And he was 22 miles to the city, and he takes off. Then Elijah said, girthed up his loins and took off running. Anybody ever run track? For 22 miles, Elijah outran the best horses in the kingdom. He beat him, man. I said, God, why'd that happen? He said, because I'll never let my people come in second place to the devil. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? I want everybody to say this. It needs prayer. Tonight, when hands are laid on me, in the name of Jesus, according to the word, I shall be healed. Not maybe, not might, I shall be healed. Generational curses will be broken tonight. Now I shall be healed. Thank you, Lord, for doing the miraculous in my life. Lord, in the book of Job, chapter 22 and verse 28, said the righteous shall make a declaration and it shall be established unto them. That was my declaration, Lord. When I lay hands, when hands are laid on me in Jesus' name, I decree, I declare, I shall be healed. Thank you, Lord. It is now established unto me. Established unto me. Everybody just, uh, if you need healing, I just want you to stand on your feet.